This episode of Bullet Heaven was made with a copy of the game provided by TikiPod. It's time once again for another super hybridized shooting game on Bullet Heaven, and what do we have here? An action RPG shooting game that mixes the general leveling, equipment, loot, stats, and abilities of a role-playing game with a fairly straightforward horizontal shooting game system. Astro Aquakitty is TikiPod's follow-up to their excellent original Aquakitty Milk Mine Defender, released to the Nintendo Switch on April 8, 2021. Then to the PlayStation 4 and PS Vita on April 15th, a PC version is also set to drop on June 3rd with an Xbox Series release also forthcoming at a later date as of this review. In theory, Astro Aquakitty has a lot of features that should appeal to a very wide audience, so let's take a closer look. Unlike the much simpler, more familiar Defender-style structure of Milk Mine Defender, Astro Aquakitty has a much more complex system under the hood. There's a lot to tinker and experiment with here, starting with the player's character choice. Four cat pilots are available to choose from with various stats to assist the player with a wide array of play styles. Naturally, I chose the heavy, granting more armor but slower speed. The scout is faster with less health. Chaos has way faster energy regeneration and Fighter has harder hitting attacks with a boost in energy recharge. The player then chooses one of four engineer companions, each represented by a variety of different animals. Repair is a rabbit who specializes in health regeneration and instant repair. Defense is a goose with added health and battery abilities. Gadget the Chameleon offers general increase among most stats and tech-based abilities, and Energy, a small dog, useful for managing power consumption and recovery. Obviously, you can tell. Just look at the guy. The two combined allow for a lot of flexibility. Heavy and Repair are a great team that can take a lot of abuse, but other players are sure to find a combo that works for them. Astro Aqua Kitty plays over the course of eight stages, which start out somewhat manageable but grow into huge expansive areas loaded with objectives, puzzles, and increasingly more difficult enemies. How long or hard the game is <laughs> depends on a few factors, but the difficulty chosen is sure to play a big part in how long the player takes to get from beginning to end. Five difficulties are available from relaxed to expert, and regular difficulty provides a decent enough challenge overall. Equipment is an important part of Astro Aquakitty. Various weapons and enhancements will be discovered in orange supply crates, purchased at beacons, and even dropped by some defeated enemies and bosses, which will go into the player's inventory as they are picked up. A total of 16 modules can be held at a time, but can be recycled out for gems if space is needed for others. Players can equip up to two weapons at a time and up to four support devices. Some combinations are going to work better than others, depending on the situation and the crew chosen for the game. Experimenting with everything should lead the player to a setup that works very well. For players that need more energy, batteries and generators will come in handy. For more health, armor layers will do the trick. Modules also exist for auto repair and weapon enhancement as well. There's a lot to try out, which makes for a highly engaging time. Players can swap out parts and weapons at any time. The catch to all of this is that all of these bits and pieces have level requirements that need to be satisfied before they can be used. So if a player picks up a level 4 weapon, but is only sitting at level 2, they won't be able to equip it. Naturally, in true RPG fashion, as players defeat more and more enemies, they will gain experience that fills a purple bar in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Level up happens when it fills completely, and players can grow to a maximum level of 24 throughout their run. A higher level leads to equipping better and better parts. But that's not all levels are good for. At level up, the player will be able to allocate ability points to their chosen crewmates, allowing for a number of special skills to be unlocked. Some are actively used by the player, while others are passive but most are very useful in the right circumstance. The player can only unlock and equip these abilities when docked at a beacon. Players can also upgrade their ship's health, armor, and energy with each achieved level, which requires gems to accomplish. The higher the upgrade level, the more resilient players will be versus enemies later in the game. Once again, the player must be docked at a beacon to upgrade their ship. At any time, players can also check their level and associated stats on the inventory screen. Movement is handled with the left analog stick, and is generally snappy but can also be augmented with various add-ons. The D-pad cannot be used, but true analog control has been implemented in this case. The further the stick is tilted, the faster the player will move. Movement speed also depends on the direction players face. Moving backwards will be slower than going full speed ahead. Players can change the direction of their ship by pressing the L button. Weapon 1 is mapped to the A button and Weapon 2 is mapped to B. 
All of the weapons in Astro Aquacity need energy to use in some capacity, with some requiring much more than others. Finding one that works to the player's taste can be quite a bit of fun. I preferred using energy weapons, but their energy consumption is often atrocious. Pairing different types of weapons together is always a good idea. A high power destructive weapon with high energy usage with a weaker, very power efficient one is a decent strategy. The blue gauge in the top left hand corner of the screen indicates how much energy the player has left. It'll recharge over time, but it can sometimes take quite a while. Thankfully, defeated enemies will often drop energy pickups to recharge the gauge much quicker. Energy is also fully recovered when saving at a beacon. Additional active skills will also be mapped to X, Y, and R as they are equipped. These abilities will also need to recharge before they can be used again. There's a lot of context sensitive stuff throughout the game as well, which will be labeled in a way that lets players know what buttons to use them with. Switches and laser turrets are a good example. Everything has health in Astro Aquacity, and while combat is very shmup oriented, complete with special weapons and bullets flying all over the place, it still has distinctly RPG mechanics as well. Hitting or getting hit by enemies will display battle damage as a numeric value in conjunction with a visual decrease in visible health bars. There is also the possibility for critical hits indicated with an exclamation point, leading to slightly more damage when it happens. The player's life total is indicated with a green gauge in the top left hand corner of the screen. Life also auto recovers over time, but defeated enemies will also drop life pickups to be used in a pinch. As a quick aside, not all enemy health bars will be visible unless a module for that function is equipped. The normal game is a fun enough time when not on a deadline, and its inherent size makes it a decent game to sit back and relax to, generally speaking. All of the trappings of an RPG are here, complete with a number of objectives, some puzzles, and even side quests that reward the player with equipment or money. Its Metroidvania light elements exist in the form of items when collected or retrieved, and specialized cats like mechanics or scientists required to open new areas of a given stage when rescued. It's also more or less on the tame side, giving a wide audience the ability to play and enjoy it at their own pace. Of course, for those that want some tension in their gameplay, they can fire up a session in permadeath mode. If the player ends up getting destroyed, permadeath locks out the game save which displays the time taken in the run, collected money, and achieved level, but nothing more. However you slice it, Astro Aquacity is a really fun time, a great amalgamation of RPG and shmup that really does work. Its controls are decent, though we often brought up the equipment skills and map screen by accident when reaching for the turnaround button. This small issue aside, so long as players aren't going into Astro Aquacity expecting a fast-paced arcade-style game, they should find an enjoyable adventure to while away the time. Of course, we have a few tips. It is always recommended to save at a beacon whenever one is found, not only to make sure a good weapon isn't lost in the event the player is destroyed, more importantly, it will also recover all health, energy, and special skill power instantly. In some situations, this will allow players to fight back hard without worrying so much about health and energy recover times. This can sometimes be abused, but hey, we're alright with that. However, this kind of brings us to our biggest complaint about the game. Not the game itself, but what happens afterwards. Once the game has been completed, the save file will save, but cannot be accessed to play. It simply says, the end, with the only option being to back out. A new game plus feature would have been excellent in this regard, allowing players to carry over their sublevel and ability points for other harder difficulties or speedruns. With no scoring and no online leaderboards, Astro Aquacity may only have limited staying power for shooting fans as a result. Even adding an unlockable traditional shmup with a rudimentary scoring system and a simple local leaderboard could have added just a little something more to come back to. Astro Aquacity follows a decent trend that Tiki Pod has set with regards to its presentation. Its visuals and sound will have fans of Tiki Pod's previous games feeling right at home, while also keeping things fresh from its back catalogue of titles like Milk Mine Defender and Iron Cryptical. On the visual side of things, Astro Aquacity employs an excellent colour scheme to everything on screen, from the menus to the sprites. Every element in the game has a soft gradient to it that gives it a smooth appearance, whether it be enemies, shots, items, or background elements. Given their generally small size, the tileset used here has a level of 2D polish that we like quite a bit. There's even an excellent use of lighting here too, allowing players to see what is in front of their ship a little better than behind it, and a good amount of subtle parallax fills out the backgrounds nicely, especially in later stages. Each area has a distinct visual style as well, keeping things fresh enough throughout the player's run. The general design of the player's ship, allied units, enemies, and even the set pieces in each stage have a ton of charm that fans of Milk Mine Defender will definitely appreciate. Speaking of charming, the character portraits are great and often adorable. On the sound front, players familiar with the original Aqua Kitty will no doubt appreciate many of the returning effects at play here, but the music is truly a step above, with standout after standout for each subsequent stage. 
However, their length, or perhaps the lack of overall tracks, feels very repetitive even early on. We started to notice it specifically in Stage 3, and it only got worse. Now, that's not to say that the music is bad here. Exactly the opposite is true. However, a better approach could have been a small set list of tracks that would play in a given stage, and perhaps a bit of dynamism depending on how far the stage has progressed. Think of the soundtrack to the original StarCraft, for example. It had a nice selection of tracks in each mission, which, as it turns out, lasted about as long as each stage here. Not just the same one on repeat. A really big aspect to Astro Aquacity's presentation is its general plot. Taking place in a series of water-filled asteroids, players will interact with and help a number of cats in their cosmic mining operations. A simple story is nice and all, but we have to say the story being told here is a bit too simple. Sure, there are all kinds of interactions, which is better than nothing, but we didn't feel especially invested with what was going on. This is mostly due to none of the pilots or engineers having names, nor any of the supporting characters players are often tasked with rescuing. Sure, it's all playful and cute, but there's not much to it in the grand scheme of things, and the story often progresses suddenly, and maybe a bit too oversimplified without enough exposition between stages. We would have liked to know more about the rabbit pirates, or about the scientists that seemed to specialize in alien botany, or the pilots that ended up getting lost when they got bored. The story could have been gussied up with more interactions and banter that changed dynamically depending on the combination of pilot and engineer chosen. There was a lot of potential, especially as an action RPG at its core, that could have made the plot here special. It's super weird to us that games like Shikigami no Shiro have a better storytelling concept than a game billed first and foremost as an action RPG. For what is here though, we wish the game's tutorial bits could be skipped or disabled for faster restarts. Thankfully, despite its simple plot elements, its gameplay more than holds up, but we can't help but wonder how good Astro Aqua Kitty could have been with the best of both worlds. Rounding out the presentation is a set of clear, simple menus and even a set of in-game cat achievements for players to earn through various challenges throughout the game. Presumably, these translate over as trophies on the PlayStation versions and achievements on PC and Xbox when those versions drop. So, how does Astro Aqua Kitty stack up? Let's take a look. Astro Aqua Kitty controls very well in most respects. We would often bump the status menu open when reaching for the direction change button though. There are a lot of places where the difficulty ramps up and every new stage will require the player to level up a couple of times to get better parts for more efficient progress. Outside of permadeath mode though, players can always restart at the last beacon they saved at. The stages in Astro Aqua Kitty are immense. As a shmup, they overstay their welcome. As an RPG, they may be a little short. But overall, with about a 6 hour playtime and no real endgame or new game plus, this may hurt Astro Aqua Kitty's staying power. Generally speaking, the visuals work very well here. Nothing exceptional or mind blowing, but great nonetheless. Astro Aqua Kitty's sound effects are fitting and work well for all applications. The music is also truly great, but gets repetitive fairly quickly. Fusing an RPG together with a shmup is always a dicey proposition, but Astro Aqua Kitty does it in a way that's fun and engaging. However, its lack of post-game material or unlockable modes leave us feeling a little disappointed. Astro Aqua Kitty's 15 US dollar price tag gives it a decent overall value. While it wasn't what we expected on the outset, Astro Aqua Kitty does a good job of evolving the Astro Kitty series in ways that don't rely on old concepts. This changeup also results in a game that isn't just more of the same of what we saw in Milk Mine Defender, and that's always a good thing. Of course, we do wish there was more to it, but the gameplay here works well, and it was a fun time regardless. As such, Astro Aqua Kitty gets a 4 out of 5. You can get a copy of Astro Aqua Kitty on the Switch eShop and PlayStation Network for about 15 US dollars, with Steam and Xbox Series versions forthcoming as of this review. Well, it's finally time. Episode 300 is upon us, and as has become tradition, we're going to be taking a look at another ridiculously hard to obtain one. Koryun for PC Engine is coming up on the next episode of Bullet Heaven. See you all in the next episode.